Tell the world that he is coming. It may be near or far away, but we must wait as he is coming. Won't be tomorrow or today. to the house of God. God bless you. We're happy to see everyone around and we want to extend same warm welcome to our internet audience um, wherever you are located all over the world. We're happy that you're part of the blessings of this hour. Um, we trust that by the grace of God the Lord will touch you um, wherever you are and you'll be partakers of the blessing of today. Well this is Apostolic Faith Church. Um, we are located at number 13 Penhill Road in um, Bexley, London, and our postcode is DA53EP. So if you live locally, we'll be happy to have you join us one of these days. And if you live far away, whenever you are visiting, we're happy to have you in our congregation so that you can partake of the blessing of the Lord. We want to thank God for his presence thus far and also to appreciate um, our choir and orchestra 
they um, played My Faith Looks Up to Thee to start the service. And then we had them, the choir also sing um, I'll Tell the World. And we just had that beautiful rendition from the male choir, Dare to Stand Like Joshua. May the Lord help us all to be able to stand like Joshua for the Lord. We will now join our voices together to sing while Brother Mike will lead us. CGS 519. Let's begin with CGS 519. There is a place I love to tarry where my soul is sad, oppressed. That is the place of Jesus. And may God help us to tarry in the place where Jesus is.
Our last number we're taking from Mrs. Ness 555. When storms around are sweeping, when loan my watch I am keeping. Mid fires of evil falling, mid tempters forces calling, remember me, Almighty One. Amen. May God remember us. Amen. We'll sing these three verses standing up. At the third verse, we'll sing without the music uh, supporting us. And at the end of the last verse, verse three, we'll remain standing after which we shall be led in prayer. <laughs> show to air for even in times of sorrow in times of difficulty we can pray to a God that hears and answers prayers we just give you praise we just give you adoration because you have kept us alive to see this day we thank you for all that you have done for us throughout the weeks but just as we have sang, the current is too high and the enemy of our soul is walking there and night to see that we fall, to see that we don't succeed. But Lord, we thank you because we have a God that we can cry unto when we are sick, when we are distressed, when we are even dismayed. And we know with confidence that you can remember us. Yes. Lord, for this, accept our thanks. Yes. Lord, for this, accept our praises. Yes. We come in that same confidence, praying to you this day that you make this day a special day. Yes. Even to all that are gathered here, Amen. that we have struggled to be in your midst. For we know that in your presence there is fullness of joy. 
that today we will have that joy. In that confidence, oh Lord, our brethren that are now here, perhaps in their sick bed, perhaps watching this service going on, perhaps unable to watch, but Lord, we know you can remember them. Lord, in that faith, touch them. There are some that are oppressed by difficulties, by all kinds of life challenges. But Lord, we know that you are the Lord that changes things. This morning, that can be our experience. Lord, do it for us. We thank you for the blessings of the camp meeting. Thank you for that of the U.S. Thank you for that of the U.K. And we praise your name for that of Africa. We know that you that have granted Johnny mercies over the camp meetings that have passed, that you are able to grant Johnny mercies. We know people are truly blessed from all over the world. But the arch enemy of our soul might seek to walk. But Lord, we thank you because your eyes run to and fro the earth. And so we pray, oh Lord, for the journey mercies of your children. Even those that have been on holidays, Lord, you will grant them journey mercies also. Lord, we are gathered here again to hear of that word that is able to make us wise. Yes. Said that word is sweeter than the honeycomb. Yes. Lord, today, oh Lord, we pray that upon your servant, yes. you will endure those words Amen. that will alter our situation. Yes. Even as we will run to the altar, yes. Lord, we will not return the same. Yes. Do it for each and every one of us. Amen. Lord, prepare us for heaven. Amen. We know this is the ultimate consummation of our faith. Yes. Lord, prepare us for heaven. Amen. Lord, do this for us Amen. and much more. Amen. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. themselves confound his strength the more is no foes shall stay his might though he with giants fight he will make good his right to be a pilgrim.
went and spake these words unto all Israel, and he said unto them, I am 120 years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord has said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee, Amen. and he will destroy these nations before thee. Amen. And thou shalt possess them. Amen. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall go unto them as he, had, as he did to Sihon and to Og, kings of the Amorites, and unto the, land, unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, Amen. that ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Amen. Six, be strong and of good courage. Amen. Fear not, yeah. nor be afraid of them. Amen. For the Lord thy God, he it is, yes. that doth go with thee, Amen. and he will not fail thee, Amen. nor forsake thee. Amen. Seven, and Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage. For thou must go with these people unto the land which the Lord had sworn unto their fathers to give them. And thou shalt cause them to inherit it. Amen. Eight and the last. And the Lord, he, he it is, that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. Amen. He will not fail thee. Amen. Neither forsake thee. Amen. Fear not. Amen. Neither be dismayed. Amen. Amen. Dark is the road that lies before me. How can I find my Good the world that's bad. 
me to the book of Genesis, first book of the Bible, chapter 8, verse 1. Genesis 8, 1. The first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. And God remembered Noah. Amen. And God remembered Noah. Amen. Today, God will remember you. Amen. Today, God will remember you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, God will remember you. When I read a passage like this in the Bible, it makes me to think, does God forget? No. So how come the first sentence here says, God remember? That means previously before this time, some things has happened. If you read previously first, uh, chapter 5, 6, 7, before we get to chapter 8, incident has happened. Destruction was going on on earth. God has said that he's tired of the human, human being on earth, and he wants to destroy all of them. But what did he do to Noah? He put him in a hack. Yes. It was God who put him there. Mm. But having done that, he forgot him there. Oh. And the destruction was going on on earth. Mm. By water. Everything getting destroyed. Mm. And after about 150 days, the Bible said, And God remember Noah! Amen. And every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the water assuaged. After a lot of rain, when the water dried up, the, like in this country, the, the floor is beautiful. In some other village, it will be very messy with mud and, and all that thing. But here where there is a good uh, drainage, when the rain has poured down and it's gone, everywhere looks beautiful, and the water assuaged. So after God have done what he wanted to do. He remembered Noah. Amen. Many, many times, most of us, you and me, we are kept in the ark. Amen. And we don't know. We'll be thinking we should come out. I should do this. I should do that. You should do that. But God kept you in the ark with his own plan. Amen. And at times you pray and pray as if he doesn't hear you. He's hearing you, but he's keeping you in the ark. You call upon him, you fasted. You pray, you cry with tears. God is keeping you in the ark. Amen. You aspire to do something, you can't do it. He's keeping you in the ark. When our time comes, he's the one who put you there. He will remember you. God will remember you. I like the Bible so much in the sense that I read a lot of books. And I have to because of my subject. Uh, first, I trained as an IT teacher, and eventually, computer science. Uh, it demands a lot of changes every year. And many times, I want to write some program myself. I made a lot of mistakes. It doesn't work. And because of that, I have to read and read again and listen again to other experts who are better than myself. And despite all this, when I finish my reading and I come to the Bible, when I take just one verse, it just moves all over my body. Yeah. It just makes a difference in my body. Amen. I just say, wow, why, what's, what's, what about this book? Why is it so different? <laughs> when I'm doing my study, I have all the books everywhere on my table. Computer is there, and laptop is there, and mobile is there. When I'm doing all that reading, I'm just there. But when I finish and I take the Bible, Amen. difference take, take place. Amen. The environment change. Amen. I start to be hearing God talking. It is wonderful, you know. Amen. May God help us to be reading the Bible. Amen. God, who remember Noah, Amen. is going to remember you. Amen. Because of that passage, I was trying to find out what does the word remember actually means. It means to, 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 to be forsaken, to be abandoned, to be deserted, to, to be renounced, actually, or to be rejected, or to disown, or cast aside. There are many words we can use in this word forgetting or uh, forsaking. Discarded, relinquish, or give up. And to make this uh, explanation clear, we're going to use one character in the Bible to make it clear how God himself was one planning, but as if he's forgotten him. So that you can see that whatever is happening to you, God is aware of it. He doesn't forget anyone. He doesn't forsake anyone. He doesn't disown anyone. He does not discard anyone. He does not reject anyone. Always remember everyone. The Bible said in one passage that every hair on our head is counted. 
So when one of them drops, he is aware of it. That means wherever you are, God is aware of your presence. He knows where you are. Either you are privileged to be here in this church, or you are unable to be here in this church, you are connecting online, or because of your ailment, you are not strong enough, God knows where you are. And God is going to reach out to you. If you are on your bed, God is going to raise you up. Because God will remember you. When we talk about forsaking now, let's come about spiritually when one is forsaken. That's a terrible one. If you forget me, if you forsake me, if you relinquish me, if you discard me, that's still okay. But if God does that, that's terrible. In the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, 26, 1 Samuel 15, 26, says, And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected thee from being king over Israel. That's a spiritual rejection. When you come to that state that God says he has rejected you, oh, that would be terrible. May that not happen to you. Amen. When you are spiritually rejected, the interest to pray will be gone in you. When you are spiritually rejected, the interest and love of the Bible, as I'm saying the Bible is good, to use like word about it. Because already you are rejected spiritually. For you rejected the word of God, so God will reject you. But you see, the word of God is God's word. Then God will remember you. Amen. Spiritually rejected, you, you don't have the motivation or interest to pray. You lost interest in gathering with the people of God. You always have reasons and excuses why you cannot be gathered together with the people of God. When you are spiritually rejected, you have enough excuse that no human being can argue with you. You put down the excuse and everybody will just say, okay, God, I have mercy. May God not reject you. Yeah. When you are spiritually rejected, everything that is godly, it will be boring to you. When you see the people of God running at us, get out, you look at them, what is it? Church, church, man. Every time, church, church, church. Sunday you go in morning to leave me. What is it? I'm going home to have fun. You are being rejected spiritually. When you are not rejected spiritually, you want to be with the people of God. You love to be among the children of God. You want to do what the children of God are doing. Anything spiritual is not boring to you. May God not reject you. May God not reject you. In the book of Malachi, for you to see the importance of how if you have been rejected, how you can come back. How you can come back so that God can accept you. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. 3, 16. Then they that fear the Lord speak often. Often one to another. And the Lord God Almighty hearkened. And he had it. And a book of remembrance was written before God, before him, for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. As we are here today, a book of remembrance is open. Your name is written there. That you are here to communicate with the people of God. It is God's word that says that. The book of remembrance. Just imagine, you go to the diary of the Almighty God, and you went to the first book. You see your name there, in the diary of God. How great you will feel. The first time I saw the diary of my father, and he wrote a little thing about how good I was. I was so happy. I sneak into the room, and I didn't know why I just went to open the book, and I saw Michael. Oh, will I be a good boy? He liked to go to prayer 5.30 a.m. every morning. I was so happy. I said, my father wrote something about me. Now imagine if it is God yeah. who has written down in his own diary a book of remembrance about you, about your attendances to church, about your commitment to the, hand, to the work of God, about your interest in everything spiritual, everything godly. Imagine God writing about you, about your in, the determination to do something for God. How wonderful that would be. That's what the Bible says, Malachi 3.16. A book of remembrance is written. Yeah. God will remember you. Yeah. 
I can give you the guarantee in the Bible how I am so sure God does not forget anyone. In the book of Isaiah, prophet Isaiah 49, the book of prophet Isaiah 49, verse 15. Can a woman forget her sucking child? That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, it can happen. When the trouble is too much. So this child, don't kill me. Leave me alone. Cry, 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 cry. Give me a gift. The mother can get to that level. Even though she loved the mother, the baby. But the trouble, ah, let me rest. Ah. I give you food. I give you drink. What test do you want? Leave me. The Bible says, yes, they may forget. Yeah. Now, see the difference. Yet will I, that's God Almighty, Amen. yet will I not forget thee. Amen. What a wonderful God. Yeah. If you feel forgotten, I want this word of encouragement to make you realize that you are not forgotten. Amen. It is your feeling. Yeah. If it is somewhere in your head, that you have been abandoned. I want to assure you with the word of God, you are not abandoned. Amen. God is keeping you in the ark. Amen. He doesn't forget anyone. He doesn't forsake anyone. Like I said to you, our main character, this, this message is about David. We want to use that. It's a very good example in the Bible. Who was living his life? Let's open to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 16. A young man doing his best, but he's unrecognized. 1 Samuel 16. Let me read verse 11. 1 Samuel 16, 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There are many, yes, the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. Let's stop there. This is a boy born into a family. He had big brothers. That we, 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 there's no account in this uh, story of David that there was a problem at home. The brother, they like him. The parents, they like him. But look at him like, well, it's too small. He doesn't know anything. He's not strong. When they are talking about good things, they don't, he's a shepherd boy. They don't think about him. When they were recruiting soldiers, they look at him that he's too small. He's not strong enough. But he was stronger than them. Yeah. Can you see? They recruit soldiers. The big brother. They stand firm and tall, strong with muscles. But when it comes to David, no, 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 leave that boy. Leave him. But it's not that they hate him. Did they hate him? No. no. Because God was keeping him in the ark. No matter think people hate you. No. God is keeping you in the ark. Yeah. And when the time comes, he will remember you. Yeah. To them, to the brothers, to the parents, David is, when the, there's an adage in my, in my language, I'll say it in English. They say that, if they are eating dogs, how come the fat part of it is given to a high bishop? That is to say that if we are talking of position or strength, David, he's uh, nobody, he's a little boy, he's weak, he's not strong, he's not even clever, he doesn't know anything. But you know what David was doing? He started his congregation in the bush, he was playing his musical instrument to the animals. God is training you. He's not recognized to play anywhere. It's not as if they hate him. But he was doing all that he knows that is best in the forest there. Singing to the animal. Playing his instrument. And no one knows that somebody was seeing him. Somebody is seeing you. God is seeing you in your corner. God is everywhere. His eyes is everywhere. That good thing that you are doing. Keep on doing it. God is seeing you. When the time comes, he will remember you. Don't relent. They're talking of soldiers. They're talking of strong people. They're talking of clever people. David is not, is not recognized. I read further on 1 Samuel 16. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Say, and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. His own father, very well. They're talking of who's going to be king. David, of all people. David, the king. He presented his strong boys. He presented the agile boys. The boys that he knew that they are clever. Not knowing that David is more clever. Yeah. You might be thinking, oh, they should have mentioned my name for something. I should have been appointed for something. I, should have, I could do better. 
I could sing better. I could preach better. I could teach better. God knows that. Don't get discouraged. When he remembers you, he will come out. You are in the act now. Keep on doing the good things you are doing. If it is prayer you want to pray, continue to pray. If it's reading the word of God you can do, continue to read. If it is giving tracts you can do, continue to give. If it is giving food you can do, continue to give it. God will remember you. Just imagine, the father, he doesn't hate David. We didn't hear of any fight at home, but the father will never present him for anything important. When people, when people come to the house to visit, they won't call David. Maybe he'll be in the kitchen, you fetch water. And when he's coming to the sitting room, to, they collect it from him. Go back, go fetch it. So he doesn't have the chance to even see the big people. So he's there, unnoticed, unrecognized. But God recognizes you. God recognizes everyone. When that time comes, and Joshua, uh, Samuel, the man of God, has done what God has him to do, and he knows God has spoken that it is one of the sons of Jesse. And Jesse, the father, has presented as it were all his sons. And Samuel knows that God doesn't lie. Ah, he says, Papa, Jesse, what's wrong? Are these all your children? And that is, yeah, that is, uh, that is one shepherd boy there. That one, all he can do is to be playing musical and to be looking after sheep. He go bring him. They will bring you up. Jesus will bring you up. Jesus will bring you up. When you keep on looking unto man to bring you up, you will fail. When you are making too much expectation, even about me, I will disappoint you. But when it is of God, God will never disappoint you. God will never, at any time, disappoint you. I will bring it down for you to understand what I'm saying. Many times, parents, father and mother, they'll be telling the child, go and pray and be saved now. At times, you feel yourself you are saved. What you should do is that I am praying humbly. Don't fight them. It is because they are concerned for you. Maintain that you are saved. And when you maintain that you are saved, keep on doing the right thing. And God will know you are saved. He will uphold you. Your father and mother, they are pestering your life. It's not that they hate you. They love you. Look at this man here. He loved David. We never hear that he fought him, but he put him aside. So when your father and mother are nagging every time, go pray, go pray. They don't hate you. It is their own concern. And into their own eyes, you don't look safe. Yeah, that is their own eyes, but don't bargain, don't, bar- don't, bar- don't argue with them. If you know you are saved, ah, God is able to keep you. You had that in the passage of the Bible reading? That Lord God is able to keep you. I will not fail you. And he will not forsake you. So if you are a child, and you know you are saved, but your father didn't believe that. Your mother didn't believe that. Don't make a fight with them. Have you ever had David fighting his parents? No. Have you ever had him fighting his brothers? No. He kept on doing what he knows best. Keep on doing what you know best. Come to the house of God. Don't let them be begging you to come. On Sunday, get ready. Get what you need to do on time. Read your Bible. Get your memory verse on your head. When they call for memory verse, be the first person to jump up. Do your best. God notice all. We are not abandoned. We are not rejected. We are not discarded. No one can do that. Only God. And God does not forget anyone. Verse 12 of our Bible text. We are looking at the main character, David. Verse 12, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, very young, and with all of a beautiful countenance. Young people, they are always beautiful, aren't they? Every father will say, my king, their son. Every father will say, my prince, their daughter. Every child is beautiful. And goodly to look to. If you don't notice that, go and look at children. See how beautiful God makes them? Every small, small thing, but it's wonderful. Every little eyes, little fingers, little hands, little smile, they are beautiful. That's how God made them. And the Lord said, now God talking to Samuel, arise, anoint him, for he is the one. God will say that to you. God will arise for you. And he will anoint you. 
for that which he has purposely spared your life for. Because that is God. He is not man. Look at here. David is nobody. To him, he will be like, whoa, whoa. See, I'm just a shepherd. I anoint me for waiting. For what? King? What is king? You can imagine from the field to be saying you are a king. This is a boy that they feel that is not strong. This is a boy that they think is not wise. This is a boy that they cannot present in the public. They hide him in a corner. But God is seeing him as the king of all. Stronger than everyone. Wiser than everyone. Greater than anyone. Can you imagine what God is planning about you? Can you imagine what God is planning about you? You hear me online. Can you imagine what God is planning about you? You don't know, but keep on doing the right thing. God will remember you. Verse 13. First Samuel 16, 13. So anointed, but not yet on the throne. I'm coming, I'm reading the word. But God's spirit rested upon him. So, he was anointed. You read that verse 13. But he was not yet on the throne. You have been saved. You have been sanctified. Even God has blessed you with baptism of the Holy Spirit. But you still feel that I'm not known. I am not recognized. And inside you is boiling. I have a calling. I, I, I have a calling. I, 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 I. Yes, you are right. Wait, God is keeping you in the ark. He is keeping you in the ark. That your calling, God is keeping you in the ark. When the time comes, you come out. And you will shine like gold. Remain in the ark. As Noah did remain in the ark. He's keeping you there. God has saved you. That's anointing. God has sanctified you. That is anointing. God has given you baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. That is anointing. But you felt like, oh, I want to do this. I cannot do this. Ah, I want to do this. Keep on praying. That's the job for now. Keep on praying. That's the job for now. When that time come, when that time come, God will remember you. He was not yet a king, so he back to his, uh, to his job as a shepherd, shepherd boy. But a very faithful boy. A very honest boy. Chapter 17, 1 Samuel. Chapter 17, 1 Samuel, verse 28. And Eliab, his eldest brother, had when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down either? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? You left the sheep, you come here. Who do you think you are? You think you can fight battle? You think it's animal? You think it's sheep that you are looking after there? Eh? You come here. They are talking about war. You think you, think you can fight? I know thy pride. That's the brother talking to him. And the naughtiness of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou might see the battle. Uh-oh. How did he come there? The father said, take food to your brothers. And he's a faithful and honest boy. He collected the message. He's going on an errand they sent him. He brought the food to the battlefront. And then he was hearing a very disdain statement against his own God. And he felt, come on, who's this one? Like the animal I've killed in the bush. How dare him? Like our lesson of today, speaking against God. How dare this one? Who is he to be speaking against my God that destroyed beard and lion for me? Who is this one? Because the power of God was upon him. The anointing of God was upon him. His way of act is different. His behavior is different. His response to stimuli, to situation, to actions is different. When you are an ordinary person, you act ordinarily. When you are an ordinary person, you talk ordinarily. But when you are spiritual, you will be spiritually conscious. And when a situation comes, you will be spiritually awakened. And the spiritual sense in you will make you to realize this is a spiritual battle. Don't fight with anyone. Don't fight with anyone. It is God who put you in the ark. Remain there. He will remember you. Don't make much ado about nothing. Remain where God put you. That's where David remained, where they put him. 
And he didn't just say, I want to go to the battle to go and see the battle. The father sent him, so he obeyed. And there he saw somebody disdaining God. And that's where the Spirit of God spoke through him. Have you never been prompted by the Spirit of God at any time? When the Spirit of God is in you, it will move you to do something at a time. At a time. Like overnight today. Before I go to bed normally, I, I would like to read or do something that it will go with me in my sleep. At a time, I like to read a, a, a story in the Bible. And once I read that and I go to bed, I am in that realm. I'm reading in my sleep. And then it will become from reading to reality. And I find myself acting like what is in there. I've been pondering and reading these messages and this Bible about David. And overnight, God just woke me up and said, put this passage down. Put this sentence down. And then again, I woke up many, many times. I don't wake up normally when I sleep. Once I sleep, bang, until the daybreak. But this time around, God will just, he will get me up. And then, okay, he will tell me this. And then I quickly write it down. He will tell me another thing, and I quickly write it down. And God assured me that he doesn't forget anyone. God actually spoke to, spoke to me that he has never forgot anyone. So if your situation is as if you have forgotten, this encouragement word is for you. If you are feeling that you are discarded, you are not discarded. If you are feeling that you have been left aside, cast aside, you are not. Don't look at what human can do. Look at what God can do. And God is a faithful God. And if I, we never read that uh, the brother was noticing David in this perspective at all. But in these sentences that we have just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 17, I was wondering, wow, you've never heard about uh, that David is like this, that he's proud, that he's naughty. We have never read about that, but that's what the brother is saying. Have you not been told by your parents, you young one, that you are naughty? Have you not been told by your mate, you elderly one, that you are too proud? Have you never been told by some people that you are too stupid, you are too stubborn? Have you never been told that way? If you have, if I have not been told, thank God for that. But many situations will come and say, eh, too proud for nothing. But you know inside you, you are not proud. Don't you? You know inside you that you are not proud. And God knows that. And God who knows that for David, see how he helped him out. Verse 29. First Samuel 17, 29. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? What did David do? He carried the message of his father. And now they're accusing him. Hey, what did I do now? My father said I should bring food for you now, my brothers. And that's all I've done. And then I hear somebody disdaining my God and ridiculing my God. I can't stand that. That's, that's all that bothers me. Anybody can talk to me anyhow, but don't talk to my God anyhow. I, I can't stand that. You just insult my God. No way. That's all I've said. But you know what happened, Bible student. How God helped David, untrained soldier. He was never trained. But he was a victor. You see what God can do? There's nothing you can do by your training. Thinking that when you learn this, you do this, you become this. It's only when God makes you to be what you're going to be. You can study and study and study. When you find it difficult to apply knowledge to understanding, you will not be wise. But when you learn and you bring the knowledge to the understanding and you, are, you apply it to your life, you become a wise person. So you can get degrees. You can do so many vocational courses unless God help you. When God help you, you will not even finish your course before God will make a way. I was doing a course and my wife was saying, are you going to get a certificate on that one? I said, no. I just need to upgrade myself. I've done a lot of certificates. I just need to make myself better now. There are many areas that, many situations you don't need a certificate anymore. You need to prove yourself. And not to man, because man will always say you don't know nothing. When you prove to God, God himself will put you where you least expect you will ever be. That is what happened to David. Is that not a cause? So how can we do it? How can we be remembered? How can you be remembered? If, if you feel within you that you have been forgotten, you have been neglected, you have been rejected, you have been relinquished, you have been discarded. How? What do we do? Continue doing the good thing that you are doing. Be faithful. 
entertain no fears, entertain no worries, entertain no complaints. Don't make complaint. God doesn't like complaint. The wise people, they are always quiet. They will say and say and, and, and talk and talk to them. They just sleep. That's a lot of wisdom in quietness. But the moment you speak, you want to defend yourself, people will take you to be a fool. Don't do that. Let God fight for you. You can't fight. If you fight for yourself, you can't win. But when God arise and fight for you, you will be a victor. Amen. What you did not say, people will speak for you. Amen. When they gather, they talk about you, people will speak for you. Amen. When they're discussing about you, people will speak. Yeah. You know the case of David? When he was getting to the climax, the, pro, the recommendation that his father would have given, the recommendation his brother would have given, unknown person, a servant to the king, was giving that recommendation. Was giving that qualification about him. All about what he can do. He see if he has it what. Unknown person was doing that. That there is a young man who is very skillful in the instrument and has the spirit of God. The father never said that. The brother has never said that. The people you think that will recommend you, don't look that, don't look that way. God will recommend you. The Bible says that if you have anything good to do, do it. If you or me I'm in a privilege to recommend somebody, it's better we do it. Too. But if you don't do it, God will do it. Because what God has planned for everyone, no one can step on it. If you speak good of me, thank God for you. If you don't, God will speak of me. God will speak good of you. Where you don't even know what is going on. They will start to fight because of you. Somebody who doesn't know you will say, where do you know him? Where do you know Michael? Yes, yes, I know him. He's a man of God. I know him. He has a humble spirit. I know him. And then you are not there. You don't even know what's going on. And the recommendation will be piling up. And your known person, superior to those who have made a good recommendation of you, will not say, call him. Don't you think that the king was superior to the father? The king was more superior to the, to the brothers. The king doesn't even know him. But when he had the CV, go and call that boy. They will call for you. When God remembers you, they will call for you. And it's a known person. Those who are above, those who are above. You get that statement? They are above those who are above. The top of those who are on top. That's what God can do. God will remember you. He doesn't forget anyone. And at the same time, how to, you should remember, search your heart. Make sure there's no sin. Pray to God. Make sure your salvation is sound. Make sure your sanctification is sound. Make sure your baptism of Holy Spirit is sound. Make, you, make sure you get your anointing every day. Don't let anything take that away. Then keep on reminding God of his promises. From our Bible reading, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. Keep on reminding God his promises. Verse 8. And the Lord, he it is that go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. That is the promises of God. Don't make a complaint. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Don't complain. God doesn't like complaint. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God will not forsake you. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Amen. Don't look unto man for your own care. Look unto God. Amen. He cares for you. Amen. Hebrews 13, verse 6, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Amen. 
if somebody help you, you will thank the person, won't you? Yeah. But if nobody help you, but God is the one that help you, yeah. who are you going to thank? Yeah. It is God. Yeah. Where they think you will not reach, when you get there, you will say, thank God. Yeah. You don't need to thank anybody. Yeah. You'll be able to say, the Lord is my helper. Yeah. God wants you to know that if you can take all these step-by-step instructions, don't, not, don't, don't entertain fears. Don't entertain worries. Don't entertain complaints. Just be doing the good thing you are doing. Do your prayer. Don't, don't look back. Attend your church services regularly. Be connected with God. Actually, yes. I got a message in the course of the week. It really does. It actually makes me to remember in the village what happens. Right? In the village, a lot of things happen there. About an old woman in the village. When we say village, we are not talking of village in the United Kingdom here. Village in the real rural area, okay? Village, proper village, where the backyard is uh, dust and everything like that. He said that a, a, an old woman, uh, when he wants to cook beans, okay, he will, he will choose the good one, yeah? He put that one to be cooked. And the bad one, he will just throw it to the backyard because it's bad. He can't cook that one. He doesn't like that. I mean, if it is you, you won't take that. He will throw all the bad beans into the backyard. And he will cook the normal one and he will eat it. But after a little while, the one he threw to the backyard, the bad ones, they become germinated. And then they grow up. And then they become another better beans again. The rejected beans has now been recog- recognized. And now you, you will now, she will now go back to the backyard and begin to fetch that one. You might say you are rejected. God will make you to, to spruce up. Yeah. Huh? The rejected cornerstone. Yeah. God will make you to spring up. Yeah. And then they will say, ah, the beans that we threw to the backyard is grown, oh. There are so many beans in the backyard, oh. You thought you are rejected? No, you are not. Because God remembers you. Yeah. He will raise you. Yeah. Listen to this. When God created fish, how did he do it? He spoke to the sea. When God created trees, what did he do? He spoke to the earth. When God created man, what did he do? That's a difference. He spoke to himself. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So you are like God. He won't forget you. Amen. God cannot forget his own. Amen. You are created like God. So no matter what is going on, either you are sitting here listening to me, either you are online connected, or you are bedridden today, you can come to church, you cannot be forgotten. Amen. Because God created you in his own likeness. Yeah. And though you might look rejected like the beans that was thrown to the backyard, you shall grow up. So to make that work, the man that is making the likeness of God should be connected to God. Once you are connected to God with salvation, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you get yourself anointed every day, you take the word of God very seriously, you make sure you read it every day. If you can't read so much, just one verse a day, or at least before you go to bed, you will see how you get connected. You'll be sleeping, you'll be reading the Bible. In your dream, you'll be reading the Bible. In your dream, you'll see God will be talking to you. And he'll be giving you assurance, I am with you. And I will not forsake you. That is what God does. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the call according to his purpose. God call you for a purpose. And everything that is happening... God is aware of it. God doesn't make mistakes. No. Finally, if you open with me to Hebrews chapter 4. If your heart is clear and you know there's no sin in you, it gives you confidence. Yes. One of the songs that we sang today said, I love to be alone with Jesus. Yes. You know, this is a house of God. I love to pray, but at times I want to really cry out my mind. If I cry out here, everybody will say something is wrong with him. But when I'm alone in my house, when I lock my door, I can say, Jesus! And you know what? He hears me. 
Many times when I'm driving back on my way home, after an hour or two hours drive, I'll park and I'll walk in where nobody will hear me. I'll say, oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody will think I'm mad there. Eh? Because I know God hears prayer. And God does not reject anyone. The God does not fail anyone. God will surely remember you. Man may forsake you. Man may reject you. God will not reject you. He made you in his own image. You are in the likeness of God. And he will always keep you. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the ground of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Do you feel rejected? Come to the throne of grace. Let us talk to God. He doesn't reject anyone. He will remember you today. He will open the ark for you today. He will recognize you today. He will put you where you should be. And your blessing shall be permanent. As we sing, God bless you. Lord our God, remember us for good, oh Lord. Every one of us, even those at home, those in their hospital beds, oh Lord, those that are watching us from all over the world, remember us all for good, oh Lord. Remember us for salvation. Remember us for sanctification. Remember us for baptism of the Holy Ghost. Remember us for healing. Remember us for deliverance. Remember us for blessing. Provide jobs, oh Lord. Provide sound health. Bless us, O oh God, and send us home with joy and rejoicing. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen.